Now, today is a very special day for any space scientists, and to explain more is scientist Greg Foote with Barney. See, we like some special effects to start an interview. Greg, it's always good to see you. I say that, it's not always good to see you, actually. The last time you were here, you caused me a considerable amount of discomfort. Yeah, the chilly day. Yeah, we're not doing that today, are we? No, no, no. no. We're talking about comets yep. instead. Right then, why? So right now, 300 million miles away, there's a spacecraft shooting through space. Wow. It's called Rosetta, and its mission is to track down a comet, a comet called 67P churyumov gerasimenko yeah, or just it. Comet CG. That'll do for Let's now. Just call it for that, okay. right? Okay. Um, it's an amazing mission. It's been going for 10 years. It was launched 10 years ago. It's been slingshotting around Earth and Mars out into space with the, with the idea of trying to land on top of this comet. So today is a very important day in that journey, 10 years so far, but today marks a bit of a change for that journey, doesn't it? Yeah. If it kept going, it would just miss the comet completely. So today they're doing a major rendezvous manoeuvre. An MRM, know it well. Yeah, so what they're going to do is change its route very slightly so that it can catch up with that comet and land on top. Now this isn't a comet that's travelling at a few miles an hour. These things are very, very fast. So Rosetta's going to have to match the speed, get alongside it or on top of it, and then land on the comet. Mm -hmm. Why? It's, it's amazing. It's an amazing mission. So we've always been a little bit fearful of comets. For centuries we've kind of drawn pictures of us cowering in front of these comets. Yeah. Now we obviously know more about them, but we don't know everything. We don't know how old they are, we don't know where they came from. Do they come from inside the solar system, do they come from outside the solar system? What we do know is that they're made of the same stuff as our early solar system. So if we can land on top of it, work out what it's made of, then we may be able to unpick the origin and the evolution of the solar system. It's a big event, isn't it? It's like really, a really big event in really history. Neat. And you're actually going to try and recreate a comet. You're going to try and make one from bits that are here already. I am, yeah. So okay. half a comet is essentially water, right? Yes. I'm going to pour some water in. This is what NASA do, by the way. This is kind of very similar. They actually make a model of a comet and do tests on it. So this is this is pretty accurate model. So like in a science lab, when you do experiments on things, we're doing the same thing, but we're just trying to recreate a comet. Yeah, as you do. Um, this is just soil, because the other half is pretty much organic material, dark organic material like rock. Yeah. rubble, that sort of thing. There's lots of complex chemicals in a comet. To, to represent that, I'm going to use soy sauce. OK. Of course. Uh, there well, isn't soy sauce in a comet. We're not going to eat it, are we? No. OK. No, definitely not. Especially when you see what I'm about to do to it. So there's my complex chemicals. Brilliant. The next thing you need is some ammonia. Yes. There's lots of ammonia in a comet. This, these are smelling salts. Yeah. You can smell now, them. smelling salts are traditionally used to, um, to relieve the symptoms of a cold. It yeah. gets rid of all the... The bowies in your nose, but it smells very strong. Yeah, also very it's strong. It kind of wakes them up. So yeah, it would. that's pretty much all the ingredients. The last ingredient is the dangerous one. So I need right. to put some glasses on. I laugh in the face of danger. The last ingredient for a comet is frozen gas, especially carbon dioxide. <laughs> so I've got carbon dioxide, frozen carbon dioxide. It's called dry ice. So I'm going to pour this in here. It's going to freeze everything up that we've got in there. Look at I'm that. Give it a huge stir as it's going. That looks so cool. Isn't it wicked? You can see why they use it in sort of horror movies and Harry Potter and things like that. It looks uh, so magical, doesn't it? Now, this is just freezing what's inside, effectively. Yeah. yeah, we've got all the ingredients inside, and our comet will be ready very soon. OK, now, just in case you're wondering what's going on, you can't make this at home. It's too dangerous to make. But you can make your own version of a comet using edible stuff, like cookies and ice cream. So go to the Blue Peter website, bbc.co.uk slash Blue Peter. You'll find the link on there. And when you taste it, it really is out of this world. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. So, our comet is almost ready. Let's establish the difference between uh, asteroids, comets and meteorites. They're not all the same thing, are they? No, they're all very subtly different. So, this is a comet. It's a dusty snowball or a snowy dust ball, essentially. Yeah. Um, an asteroid is different. It's big, it's made of rock and metal. But it doesn't have a tail when it gets close to the sun, like this will have. Um, also... It's quite active in there, isn't it? It's very active in there. In fact, it's making a bit of a mess. But I like that. That's what we like. Um, then you've got a, a meteoroid, which is like a smaller, smaller version of an asteroid, right? A meteoroid. Yeah. And then if that goes down through our atmosphere and burns up, that's called a meteor. If it lands on the ground, a meteorite. Right, I think I might leave that. I think this is probably pretty much done. I was going to say, no TV presenters were hurt in the making of this comet. Here it is. So this oh, is... wow. ..our comet. This is what's known as a nucleus. So this is the, the bit right, the hard bit in the centre of a comet. It's normally 10 miles across. You can see it's warming up, so we're getting bubbles all over. So cool. Bubbling all over the place. Now, if that gets even closer to the sun... Here's the sun. Here's the sun. As it gets closer, you get jets of gas and dust flying off from deep inside. That is amazing. That forms a big cloud around it, known 
as, as a coma, which can be up to 60,000 miles across, which is like eight times the size of the Earth. It's incredible, It's isn't huge. It? As it gets even closer to the sun, that whole cloud of dust starts interacting with the sun's atmosphere, and you get a big tail shooting out the back. And that's why you picture a, a comet with a tail. So you can see why people want to land on it and actually find out what it's made of, just to learn a bit more. But there is another date to look out for, isn't there? Yeah, there is. So um, the big rendezvous manoeuvre is today. Yeah. Uh, then in August, it's going to actually catch up with the comet. And then in November, it's going to try to land on top of the comet. Absolutely amazing. I'm sure you'll agree, an amazing demonstration too. A round of applause for Greg, everybody. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah. Oh, what a legend, Greg.